Ricky, how are you doing? Speedy Gonzalez, awesome. Let me pop out the chat. Put on my glasses. Good morning, everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. Let's check it out. Let's make sure we're still live streaming. This guy, I'm gonna reload. What is the date today? Today is July 28th, Sunday, 2019. And we're doing a live stream on comic books. Let's talk comic books. <laughs> I don't think we've done one of these for a long time. Uh, I don't even know if we've done a live stream. Must have done a live stream on comic books for sure. Um, but I can't remember when the last one was. Spider Beans, how are you doing? Good morning, good morning. How is life? I was looking forward to the stream. Happy day, happy day. Good, 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 good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's summer in my part of the world. I don't know where you guys are, but X, how's life? Um, in my part of the world, it's just recently in the last uh, couple of weeks, really, a little bit like over a week, actually, that summer has sort of kicked in. It's warm and the warmth is going down to the bones. So it's good. Zare, brother, how are you doing? What's happening? <laughs> been following a lot of things a lot of things in the background we sent off a whole bunch of comic books off on the ebay packaging and packing them up the one video i loaded up that was the first uh, package uh, the video um, that we loaded on bitchute and you you uh, youtube oka oka one hey 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 twitching jason hey chicho just popping in to say hello about to head out of the house here Hope everyone's well. Looking forward to watching this later. Awesome. Have a great day, uh, Twitching Jason. And Oka Oka, always welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, it's been fun. It's uh, last couple of weeks because summer's kicking in. Um, uh, it's been super fun and it got me into the whole uh, thing of doing the eBay, the comic book stuff, putting a lot of packages together, sending them off. Uh, so I've been busy on that front. It took, takes a lot of work. Package up comic books and send them away and make sure everything's proper and stuff. And shipping fees are insane. I'm doing good, man. We've had a couple of friends stay with us um, for the weekend. There's been a couple of events happening. So we've, uh, we've sort of been spending, uh, get this thing in focus, we've sort of been spending some time just talking catching up and interacting with other friends and stuff so it's fun listen to a lot of music a lot of music chicho i had the greatest conversation with a couple of strangers in an electronic store yesterday it was like speaking to myself 40 years later in life so random what was it about sorry hey chicho finally able to catch a live stream awesome dragon 108 dragons 108 dragons is that from a reference to a book or a show or something 108 dragons. I'd like to see 108 dragons. Rendell, greetings Chicho. Hope you're doing well. I need to get some things done, but wanted to stop by to say hello. Thanks for popping by, Rendell. Thanks for popping by. Go get stuff done. Sunday is do stuff day or do nothing day. Uh, you can get a lot of things done uh, as long as you're not pressed for time. That's what I've noticed on Sundays and Saturdays. On It depends on the times that I have off. If uh, I get into the rolling of things, I got a lot done uh, when I'm doing it as I please, right? There's no timeline of doing this, doing this, doing this. So super fun, super fun. And then some days off, you get or multiple days off. <laughs> you get nothing done. All you do is just uh, work on... Uh, work on yourself really right some stuff happened got kicked off seems okay now oh really the stream i usually listen to podcasts for three three to five five hours and go hard really while you're uh 
I usually listen to a podcast for three to five hours and go hard while you're doing stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I put on not sometimes podcasts, but long interviews, long news sessions, uh, panel discussions, lectures, uh, and sometimes podcasts. I listen to one with uh, who was it? Uh, the one of the co-founders of PayPal and his worker that was interviewing it was like a three and a half hour podcast or something where they were talking about certain things uh, technology and how things are rolling out uh, i like some of it some of the stuff I, I caught the guy the 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 person now one of the co-founders of paypal he's on a paypal anymore so a long time ago i forget what his name is p Google or something like this um i found him dismissing certain certain things that he knows better not to dismiss so there was a little bit of misinformation in there and either he was playing silly it was it was a nice podcast with a lot of great info about technology and society and stuff i actually talked to someone last night at a gathering regarding podcasts we started talking about the insanity of the world then books nutrition spirituality pain awesome life we were both saying how nice it is to talk to someone that understands then went out um, went our separate ways cool there's so many people that get it right as long as they're not caught up in the most recent uh, offended state that society is supposed to be in that they're offended by this and offended by that and offended by this offended good morning a truce how are you doing what an awesome surprise <laughs> so nice this just popped up <laughs> surprise i'm working hard on this end man <laughs> you usually listen to music but very often listen to chicha nikki nice heard of him he's bloody awesome <laughs> thanks for the love brother thanks for the love i enjoy it i enjoy it i was actually talking with someone uh last night at a party um regarding podcasts and the conversation didn't start off that way uh he was new to this community to a certain degree and i'm uh germatu how are you doing welcome to the live stream and i've i've been i know a few people on this in this thing but uh it was sort of a potluck and he was munching on some stuff and I went off to the table to munch on some stuff and we started talking conversation this is the conversation order of conversation right uh, and it includes comic books today and so th this this is the order of conversation that started chess so we talked about chess uh, and the mindset you have to be in to become a master right and you start dreaming about it that's the only thing you think about so we start talking about chess so we talked about chess for about half an hour Hannah how you doing we talked about chess for half an hour I was hoping for a late night stream last night morning stream was good too I was listening to jazz but this is like uh, Twitch jazz <laughs> same effect nice I'm at summer camp visiting Rachel nice nice Anna. that's your partner she's doing that the Jewish huge summer camp thing that they do right um, so the conversation for us went like half an hour we're talking about chess I love backgammon and then we start talking about backgammon I love playing on yeah backgammon on the beach anywhere with like with anything is amazing so our conversation went chess backgammon and we talked about chess and backgammon for about 45 minutes <laughs> and then we started asking each other oh what did, what are you interested in what do you do and stuff and then he told me that he works for a local tech company that analyzed the data from people who are podcasting right and they're trying to they have certain clients that they're trying to get them to be able to monetize their podcast a little bit so they can they can continue to grow their channels and stuff like this because there's a lot of things they want to do so they're in the marketing and data analysis side of it right i just want to ask what kind of websites do you use to get your news from i am from europe i will help uh it will help a lot since i want to know what's happening around the world but i don't know any websites uh dramatu um 
about a year ago, I put out a web, I put out a video sharing some of my new sources here. Let me see if I can track it down. Um, Chicho News, because I put out of about four of these so far over the last few years. Um, I want to link you to the most recent one. Some of my primary sources of news. Uh, is it this one? Might be this one. Let me see if it, yeah, this is this one. Let me get the link for you. Okay. Now, I've already moved on from some of these. So I put out this, this in December 2018, right? Some of these I don't follow anymore. Some of them, uh, and I've added more to this. Okay. So here's the, here's the list. Check out this video. Okay. Uh, about 75% of the people I mentioned there, or the stations and stuff, I still go to. I've eliminated about 25% and I've added more things that I listen to, but that should give you a pretty good idea of where I stand. Okay, and where I get my main sources of news. Mashu Sama, happy Sunday, Chicho, happy, happy Sunday. Uh, I was a summer camp counselor for two summers, fantastic experience. Is it? I've heard top fiver, I've heard it's pretty intense. I have a friend that just came back from two week summer camp with teenagers and teenagers are full of germs. <laughs> kids, are, kids are dirty. So if you hang around teenagers a lot, your immune system will go up, but you're gonna get sick right you get sick more often than not your immune system goes up the energy is intense energy is intense chicho there is there are a lot of uh, canadians here as well we love it here uh, i jumped in the in the lake and went river rafting awesome hannah awesome i have um, i asked some people since you mentioned this i think a few months ago that you were you know getting ready to do the summer camp thing and stuff like this uh, i asked a couple of jewish friends or one jewish uh, person that's very dear to my heart uh, I asked her if she'd been in, in a sort of Jewish summer camp in Washington DC and she said yeah she didn't know the name but I, I, then I, I asked her if it was really big she said yeah it was huge so I think that's the same one so she's been there she said she was in a, it was an amazing experience is it bad that news just makes me super anx uh, anxious no it should that's, that's what it's designed to do mainstream propaganda that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to make you anxious and nervous and try to convince you to consume their BS from their advertisers to calm your anxiety. I want to follow it and be in, in on the conversation, but it's just depressing and anxiety for me. Um, Spider, my suggestion is forget about listening to current events, the streams that we do sort of right forget about listening to current events and the recent news and start listening to political lectures and interviews forget about the five minute sound bites two minute one minute sound bite oh this happened here across the globe freak out a little bit one minute and then they go on to the next thing horrendous thing that has happened get you to freak out next horrendous thing so they jump you from one um traumatic experience to another forget about those look at check out lectures interviews long form discussions panel discussions on certain topics because that's where it's all about the core of what we have to understand on a geopolitical basis and once you do that for a bit and some of the stuff they may mention you, you might not understand you, you know you might not be familiar with it or understand or anything like this if you want, pause the videos, look that up. If not, just continue watching and then slowly you'll hear certain things pop up on a regular basis and check those out. The main philosophy behind those, uh, that's what it's really about. Forget about the sound bites. One kid got ejected last night. Oh no, for punching another kid. Oh, stupid kid, the violence. Noah, good morning. Good morning, Noah, how are you doing? Just visiting for the weekend, the campsite laugh out loud. That explains teenagers. They are all sick in the head. They are. They, they think they know the for us too when we were kids, right? Uh, Kuro Sky. Uh, when we were kids too, we I thought I knew what it was all about, but I didn't, right? 
It was over a woman. It was over a woman. It was over a girl. If they're... Ah, no, actually, your camp, Hannah, your camp is all ages, right? It's adults, young adults as well. So it's not a girl. It could be a woman. Yeah, it could be a woman. Good afternoon, Chicho Starsky. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Doing fantastic, man. Got my tea going. Girl, my bad. <laughs> One of my high school teachers said that the word sophomore was Greek based for wise fool or smart ass. Ah, oh, really? Is that what it is? Sophomore. Linguistics would be amazing to study, to learn. Um, but man, you could go so deep down the rabbit hole with that, I think. So deep down the rabbit hole. What is another good backgammon stream? Do you ever play on? I haven't played online. I tried before. It's not the same feel. Last night's conversation that I had with this person with chess and backgammon, he told me that there's a chess master in town that he was going to and playing on a regular basis to learn. And he ended up beating this, I don't know if he wasn't a grandmaster, he was a master, he was very high level ranking, that he beat him once and then that was it. And that chess master or chess expert a high ranking person uh, also plays backgammon. He told me where he hangs out. So, after about during this thing, going back to that story, after about 45 minutes of talking about chess and backgammon, where he told me where I can go and play backgammon with this person because I need to, I, I want to play backgammon with a certain caliber, right? And, uh, and then he started getting into podcasts and stuff and he asked me what I do. So, I told him what I do and then link it up to comic books what we've been buying and selling and connected personal finance and stuff it was a great conversation um, we exchange information so I'm going to try to uh, get in touch with them and chit chat and see what they're doing in town I love the sound of the sound of the dice cracking against the wood yeah me too and Hannah I don't like playing uh, well not that I don't like I still like it if someone has the board the uh, velcro or not velcro um What's it called? Uh, uh, velvet, velvet boards. I think they're velvet with leather casing and they, they roll in a cup. I'll do that, play that way. However, personally, I like wooden backgammon boards and small dice that you don't roll out of a cup that you grab in your hands and you shake around and give it a bang against the wood. That's what I like, Hannah as well as you of course right it's just rhythmic sound of fantastic how's the comic book stuff going gang anybody reading anything exciting the marvel stuff came out um, regarding the marvel movies uh, that was interesting you saw the price jump on some comic books right supposedly in so for those of you that don't know marvel universe for uh, their movies and stuff they've been releasing stuff on different phases that's what they're calling them they just finished phase four with the infinity gauntlet saga i guess uh, that they told and spider-man is part of phase four as well i believe and then in the comic con i think san diego comic con they announced phase four uh phase four which includes five or six movies plus some tv shows and stuff and all of the stuff that they announced you saw the if you're tracking the, the price of the comic books you saw the prices of the comic books jump right what they're going for online which is a lot of people are chasing these news events right so if you were on in the know if you're in the industry either the comic book industry or the movie industry in the studios where you knew what the studios had planned on making movies you were making for the last because this would would have been in the works for two three four five years even right so for the last few years you'd be buying the first appearances or key issues of a lot of the characters that are appearing in comic books which would be which would have been an amazing investment and then dumping 
at least half of your supply on the market right now. So for example, Dracula number 10, the first appearance of Blade, because supposedly, I didn't get confirmation on this, uh, they announced that in phase five, not in phase four, either phase five or phase four B, if you consider this to be phase four A, that they're gonna be releasing a Blade movie, right? So Dracula number 10, the first appearance of Blade, the price has gone up like two, three fold, right? At least, right? So if you were stocking up on Dracula number 10 for the last five years, just buying, you could now dump half of it, pull out your money plus uh, more, and then start uh, recycling that money uh, into other investments, right? It's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting, uh, genre to be in i think it's pretty much uh, to a certain degree it's it's like other other art forms the comic book industry however there's a major element with the comic book industry that doesn't really exist with other art forms is you can take the content from comic books and create content in other f mediums based on those comic books right so the foundation of a lot of TV and movies and books uh, and even music right now is layered on top of a comic book. So it's a pretty solid place to be. It's got derivative. If you want to think about it, there's derivatives associated to the comic books, right? Cryptic, how are you doing? Hey, Chicho brother, a month ago I went uh, to a comic store for the first time. I bought Batman, the long Halloween, nice. A Walking Dead issue and also Wonder Woman's variant cover. Gonna be going to a comic store again in a few weeks to buy more. Nice cryptic, you're hooked. <laughs> oh no, you're about to blow your li livelihood budget, right? Your life budget. And shamelessly, I still haven't read any of them. I need to go, uh, I need to go, I need to though. Don't have work for next few days. So be perfect time. Yeah, I, man, welcome to the comic book world. Uh, I don't know any comic book aficionado, collector, or anyone that reads comic books on a regular basis that is caught up with everything they, they wanted to read or everything that they're buying. I, I don't know any. I've never known anyone right, in 30 plus years of collecting comic books. There's always books that you want to read wanted to read bought to read stacked in a corner to read <laughs> filed it to get back to to read in a box and the box gets buried you don't know where it is <laughs> like, this is the way it works which is an amazing thing which is a great thing i hope it continues that way forever never f be able to finish everything you want to do we should always be left wanting in my opinion a bit late on the topic of linguistics i heard the other day that potatoes were brought to europe by the portuguese who found potatoes in peru while scavenging uh s scavenging southern america southern america i live in sweden on the border to finland and potatoes in swedish is just potatis but in finnish is Peru, Peruna. The person who told me about this said that Peruna is for Peru. Wow, I didn't know that. Makes sense. Peruna, Peru. I don't know. I didn't realize the origin of potatoes was uh, Peru. What a amazing, powerful root vegetable or vegetable period. So many nutrients. And if it's in Peru, I'm guessing it's probably came from the mountainous regions of Peru, right? Because potatoes can grow anywhere and potatoes contain a lot of minerals. Like it's one of the greatest vegetables to eat. It's got a lot of starch, like people with high, you know, sugar issues can't really eat potatoes or shouldn't really eat too many potatoes. But to take potatoes are one of the power foods that we can eat, right? And Peru is pretty hardcore in the mountainous regions, 
right? Uh, I'd be curious, uh, Nikki, if uh, it was in the mountainous regions as well. Also, I got a lot of valiance on the way to me from Great Britain. Nice, nice, Nikki. I just uh, relayed the info as it was uh, told to me. I haven't looked at the further quote. I'm more of a yam, sweet potato guy myself. Sweet potatoes are actually supposed to be even more powerful, um, more nutrients than potatoes. Purple sweet potatoes being favorites. Cool, cool. Yam, I like too. Root vegetables, I love root vegetables. Fall, root vegetable season. Lots of roasted root vegetables, right? Cook them up, eat them away, get strong, right? Get strong, fun. By the way, I had one person that <laughs> follows her work on YouTube buy some comic books. I'm not sure if they're watching this right now or they're gonna be watching it later. They bought some comic books, super nice guy, super nice guy, really. Uh, <laughs> like, he bought the stuff and paid like within seconds and he didn't wait until combined shipping and eBay automatically charges full shipping so I had to refund them some money. And then he bought another comic book and I combined the shipping with that and stuff like this. Super, super nice guy. And then before I even shipped them, He's, thank you for the trust, by the way. Thank you for the trust. I forget the person's name and if they're watching this. And before I even ship them, right? Because I, I don't leave feedback until I get feedback from the buyers, right? Because as soon as I get positive feedback, I know the transaction is complete, right? I know some people leave feedbacks right away. Some people don't leave feedbacks at all. And you should leave feedbacks if you're either selling or buying on eBay, right? Um, if you're happy with your product, if you're not, contact the seller or the buyer or whoever it is, right? Um, but uh, the person left the feedback almost instantly before I even shipped out the books. So thanks for the trust. And I'm going to do a damn good job protecting those comic books. And I'm going to put track in it just to make sure he, he gets the stuff in good time. I'm going to ship them out tomorrow. So it, it happened on the weekend, right? So I'm going to wait until tomorrow, Monday, to ship them out for him. But it gave me a good chuckle and really it put a smile on my face that the person has this much trust that uh, he's going to be happy with, uh, with the buy. Uh, I was supposed to start my garden this year, uh, 102 uh, two square feet, but we did not get any walls to begin uh, the build. Uh, it's a raised bed. Oh, that's why. I was hoping to grow potatoes among other things. Oh, so wait a second. If, you, if it's a raised bed, all you need was soil to put it in and let it grow, no? Noah, we usually cook sweet potatoes for our kids to eat. They absolutely love them, yeah. Chicho loves them too. <laughs> yeah, I might buy comics from eBay eventually, but just to start off, I go to the city where there's at least three stores to buy, a lot of them from wouldn't mind a little collection of comic cool cryptic cool we have three stores in my uh, in my city as well where are you are you in my city <laughs> no you're in cryptic you're in the states you're in the states and going to a comic book store is fantastic i go i try to go every wednesday uh, at least once a week every wednesday to pick up my pull list and if you have a pull list at a comic book store pick it up all right there's a lot of people, some people get into financial difficulty and stuff like this and they can't afford it. And if you can't afford it, contact the comic book store and just say, hey, listen, man, I'm sorry. I bit off more than I could chew. chew um, and I can't afford to buy all these. Uh, is it okay if we close my box and you just sell those comics? Or can I just come in and just buy half of them? And something like this. No, Melbourne, Australia. Okay, cool, cool. Just a skip and a hop away from Canada. <laughs> Gardening seems so peaceful and fulfilling. Yeah, Starsky, love it. Love our plants. I've taken cutting, cuttings, uh, a lot of cuttings uh, this year, just growing more more plants and stuff, harvesting some fruit. I took, I took down some more, uh, harvested some more grapes, unripened grapes for cooking later on. Uh, yeah, I don't know what our would be like if we didn't have plants it'd be weird 
I know some people don't like plants in the house and stuff. Western Aussie here. My parents have never even seen snow. Gardening is pretty easy, really. Never seen snow. I remember the first time, first few times that I saw snow when I was a kid. It's incredible. Initially, when we're growing up, we grew up in a desert region, so we didn't really get snow. We didn't get snow. Not really. We didn't get snow. So to to see snow, we'd have to go to the different city and you see snow you're like wow initially you're like oh my god so awesome you play with it um, handle it without gloves and, and then slowly you realize oh my god I'm getting numb it's so cold yeah but I do not have the walls to hold the soil oh you don't have the walls I was going to either create or buy a set of walls raised about six inches right now the garden pot plot is just an area of land that is dug down below grass level that fills with the uh, mud when it rains ah. <laughs> do you guys is, is it going to be i hope it's not clay soil because you guys are going to get pools of water the roots might uh, uh of the whatever you're growing the roots might not like it but the roots will actually go through the clay and slowly over time they might create better drainage depending on uh, what type of stuff you plant I'm not sure how deep potato roots go actually they're pretty much up above it must be a, a foot two feet max potatoes because you don't have to dig down to harvest them right we got potatoes uh, the the landlords of the place did some gardening back here and I went and talked with their uh, they actually their their uh, their father it's he's like a retired person that's come comes here and works in the garden it's really cool he's a really old guy and works in the garden he's planted like three trees like <laughs> he's like he's like 80 years old and he's doing all this stuff right I went and, went and talked to him and I gave him some of the black currant that we had harvested and he told me he planted some potatoes in the back. So we might be harvesting some of our own potatoes. He said, I, I planted it for the tenants here. If you guys want to harvest potatoes, you harvest potatoes. I suggest a trailer or bag horticulture compost with uh, azomite mixed in as well as other rock dust. Uh, Zachap. Is that for uh, potatoes? So, suggested trailer or bagged horticulture compost. What's a horticultural? Horticultural. I was born in November, full blown winter of 1989. Nowadays, the real winter comes in January, February. Yeah, late winters for sure here as well. Mulch like uh, sticks, chips, or leaves. Insulation, that garden bed. Wow, wow. I mean, I'm gonna look up horticultural. Horticultural, horticultural. What does horticultural mean? Horticultural. What is horticultural? Horticultural is the science and art of growing plants. Oh, it also includes plant con conservation, landscape restoration, soil management landscape and garden design construction and maintenance and uh, arbo arbor culture arbor culture horticultural horticulture is the science and art of growing plants cool horticulture art and science of growing plants that's cool oh yeah i live right next to niagara falls on ground Grand Island. Oh wow, I've been there. Crazy place. And the whole island is made of clay. In fact, uh, companies buy the clay from the island when people dig ponds, really. And it goes uh, for quite a bit. Usually ships to artists or for landfill covers. Yeah. Uh, but uh, things seem to grow quite well, really. Uh, in clay, eh? 
I might end up digging further down and putting better soil in for the for the roots. Uh, soil food food uh, web and mycelium is fundamental. So mycelium for mushrooms, yeah, uh, and need to break down inorganic rock into bioavailable minerals. Clay is good for soil too, if lacking it. Clay, wow. Okay, clay. Um, just on this this note, where they use clay for landfill covers. Uh, when I did the geophysics, um, we did geophysics a lot of it. We did it a lot of geophysics. We did around landfills to map contamination plumes and stuff like this. And there was a fair bit of geophysics that we did using um, electrodes. Basically, electricity or electromagnetic methods and stuff like this to find out if the lining of the landfills had any cracks in them and whatnot. So, basically, uh, for those that you're curious about how this works, it's not going to go really, but it's good information to know. The landfills, when they just open landfills that they, they create, the horrendous projects, by the way, zero foresight for a number of decades. I haven't been in it for a couple of decades now, so I'm pretty sure the practice has improved, but back then, up to the late 1990s, beginning of 2000s, what they would do is uh, just basically excavate out a certain region, right? A certain amount of land. And then they bring in clay and lay clay, you know, depending on the thickness, lay a certain amount of clay on the landfill and then press it, run over with uh, special tractors and stuff like this that compress, just like laying road, compress the clay, right? So it becomes solid because clay is not really permeable. Like, with, well, it is. Water can go through it. But because clay layers, the the minerals they lay, they're made from, they're, they're flat. Right, so basically what happens if you look at it at a microscopic level or a small scale level, the molecules or the minerals lay on top of each other, flat, flat. It's like the roofing, right? So they go like this, they go like this. So it's very difficult for water to go through them, right? So they line landfills with clay. And then usually if they're smart about it, they put a impermeable layer of plastic down or silicon or whatever material it is construct the material and then they layer it with clay again and then they can start bringing garbage right now ideally this is supposed to prevent leaching of contaminant from the landfill when it rains because these are just open landfills right so the it's exposed to the elements when it rains water goes through and water is phenomenal for picking up minerals right like when you drink water never drink distilled water if you have one cup okay but if you drink distilled water for i don't know how many days or weeks you'll die because it'll take out all the nutrients minerals from your body right so it's really good at picking up picking up ions and whatnot right and if the bottom of the landfill is not sealed then all that contaminant leaches out to the groundwater below and goes into people's wells and drinking water into the river and lakes and whatnot into the ocean right now the ideal thing is if it's completely sealed off but it never is because over time the clay and the clay will settle crack animals burrow through the lining and stuff like this so all landfills will leach never live near a landfill if you can help it right it's still terrible such a major tourist attraction yeah and they build massive landfills that make all of Niagara Falls, the city, reek like garbage. Oh, crap. The city government here is corrupt, though. So that's what all the locals say. Yeah. I went to Niagara Falls. The one time I went to Niagara Falls, I lived in southern Ontario, and I only went to Niagara Falls once. Okay. The And this was in the 1990s, late 1980s, 1990s, early 1990s. And it was just like a tourist dirty like it was just the Niagara Falls itself was amazing but it was like a cheap 
it's pro probably more high end now, but it was like a cheap amusement park that you really didn't want to visit more than once. We went to the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. Man. I'm from Buffalo. Niagara Falls is a shithole. Oh no. Spider beans. Stop trash talking Canadian. Buffalo is, I think Buffalo connects up to Niagara Falls, isn't it? Awesome. And yes, it is. All corrupt. Hello. Hello, mister. Hezekiah. Hello, mister. Hezekiah. Hezekiah. I believe so. Oh, you told me how to pronounce it last time, but I forget. <laughs> You got it. I got it. Okay, nice, nice. Practice my Japanese or original name from Japanese, I guess. We're talking about the U.S. side. Oh, you're talking about the U.S. side. The Canadian side is not as good, Noah. The Canadian side is... The American side, I'm assuming, is going to be worse than the Canadian side. You meant the U.S. side too, Spider. The Canadian side is not as good. It's, it's not much better. I've never been to the U.S. side, but I can just imagine the U.S. side because the U.S. Canada is uh, the U.S. sort of does things in more extreme than Canada. So if it's crappy, the odds are it's much more crappy on the other side. If it's good in Canada, the odds are they can do it a little bit better in the United States. Just TV shows and. Um, music and if you consider all those things within reason there's certain things that we do in Canada which no one can touch apologizing and being nice is one of them <laughs> you could try to be <laughs> that's that's what our uh, propaganda is the Fortnite World Cup except for a government of course uh, the Fortnite World Cup has a bigger cash prize than Wimbledon as it should Mr. Hezekai, yeah, his, his as it should, in my opinion. I used to watch Wimbledon a lot, right? I, I love tennis. I love those sports and stuff. They, it became too elitist, too... Uh, it became just propaganda machine. Maybe the gaming industry will become that way as well. But I'm glad there's competition. There is a whole industry popping up where uh, all the previous generations, the older generations that told kids that gaming is, is a waste of time and they didn't understand it and it's garbage. And, but I'm glad that they're seeing an industry multi hundred billions of dollar industry rising up right now that is making their established industries uh, seem not a lucrative place to be or very interesting if all people in all war zones got given international internet what would it look like if there was, are we assuming that there's no censorship, right? Uh, because in many parts of the world, the war zones, they still have internet, right? But if we assume that there would be no censorship, no control mechanisms where centralized power can control the flow of information, I think what would happen is we'd get firsthand knowledge and information about what war is really like so we would see pictures videos of atrocities everywhere right and that will prevent war that will prevent war like for example again when it's off topic but comic book discussion if it comes up comic books first right that's usually our live stream we pick a topic open discussion so if we're talking about something else and if you have something regarding the topic of discussion we'll tackle that first and interrupt the other stuff and tackle that first right but one of the first things that happened when in the last 20 years with 
after 9-11 with all these new wars starting up right in the early 2000s one of the first things that the u.s government did to control the narrative and to uh, to try to make sure they had as much support for waging war as possible they prevented news channels from showing american coffins from coming home bodies from coming home right so control narrative right you don't show your dead women and children kids really because they're like 18 19 20 years old a lot of them these people you sent to other countries to wage war that have died for the corporations to make more money you make it illegal to show footage of soldiers coming home in body bags i think that's what the first thing would happen we would see that how do you go about getting comic books graded i i don't send my comic books to be graded anywhere i never have i might at some point i'm thinking about doing it for new moon 98 that we're going to be selling uh, and i might pull some other ones and just do it we'll grade it ourselves and then send it into cgc or the other one i'd rather send it to the other one because i like there to be competition cbgb i forget what it is right there's three of them there's two of them that are legit the third one doesn't get that much credit um people don't trust it uh, because they pull scams a little bit um but uh, i've never sent comic books to be graded i grade my own comic books if i see a comic book i look at it i give it what i think the grade is right i think i'm okay with my grading i'm not intricate in you know saying oh if there's this much rip that categorizes it. no i just give it what i think it's great should be what i consider the great to be some of the stuff that just on the ebay that i've listed some of the stuff i've lowballed i called it near mint 9.4 but i'm pretty sure if other people graded it maybe 9.6 or 9.8 some of the stuff that i said it was 9.6 9.8 um they're 9.6 9.8 some people might give them a 10 right i bought comic books like the comics that i graded at like 9.6 in their better grade than comic books i bought off ebay that people have graded as 10 but i don't penalize sellers for grading their comics as 10 because i know they're not 10 right when i'm buying i'm not fooling myself so we'll see that's the way i end up grading up maybe we'll later on once i get a little bit of ca better camera stuff where we can zoom in and don't lose the focus and whatnot we'll do live streams or videos of grading comics live stream would be super cool actually just have people say what they think the grade of this would be if it's interesting uh to the stream i bought a lot uh from one buyer contains solar two to four nice solar three is the first appearance of uh, harada five to nine bloodshot zero is the first full appearance of um, bloodshot um, oh sorry the uh, ride number zero is the first appearance of bloodshot so bloodshot number zero that's a chromium one magnus number five is the first appearance of uh, rye harbinger's number zero the pink is a send away edition two rock two to four ninjack six had one to five and have to get six six is the first appearance of um uh, no sorry blood uh, bloodshot six is the first appearance of ninja so you got ninja or six okay cool and uh one lot of 15 random values as a fun bonus nice the seller crane claimed all the comics to be uh verified to near mint plus full price would have come out at seven about 70 pounds a bit steep for me but i made an offer at 45 pounds and got it the shipping was 50 nice you got 45 pounds so total was uh, 60 pounds you pay oh nice mr uh he he's a guy, he says sorry i've got to go time to work on summer homework for school cool i'll come back uh, if the stream stuff i have a good work session have a good day yeah mr Hezekiah says, by the way, Nikki, uh, 
You contacted me through Patreon, I believe. You're the one I was looking for, Harbinger number zero, the send away, right? You're asking me this. Uh, and we, we mentioned, you said uh, you're new on eBay, and if it was okay to do this, I said, yeah, for sure, make people an offer. If they take it, they take it, right? I sent you a link. Here, let me find the link. Do I have the link here? Oh, I don't have the link here. Check out this. This as well. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let me find it. I was tracking. If I had the money, I would have made an offer for this. I would have bought this. Um, oh, no, I, I could check in here. I'll send you guys a link. Check out this. It went for a good price. Okay. If I had the money, it, it sold for... It sold for 160 US. Okay, if you're in the United States, the shipping wouldn't have been that much. For me in Canada, the shipping would have been like $50, right? So it would have been $200 US. Okay. And it was, here, let me give you the link. You can look at it. Tank, how are you doing? How's life? Have you ever read Marvel? Uh, yeah, the Neil Gaiman stuff, 1620. Yeah, I read all of them, I believe. They're really good. They almost were going to make a TV series out of it. But I like Neil Gaiman. Man, I'm, do you ever start your stream a few hours earlier than today? Uh, I believe we started around 7 o'clock before as well. Really glad you helped me. Ah, oh, you're welcome. Oh, damn. Just a link alone those issues yeah yeah Neil Gaiman is by far my favorite author yeah it's a fantastic author yeah Nikki I sent you this link in patreon as well and it was harbinger zero and number one to 41 so the complete harbinger run okay the seller was saying harbinger number zero is near mint harbinger number one is near mint I looked at the pics he doesn't provide close-up pics even very fine right would have been okay and Harbinger 2, very good. Harbinger 3 to 6 was very fine. So you can kick it down, maybe, if he's grading. I don't know. You would have to buy it, right? But basically, $200 US, I could have won. I could have bought this. If I had that extra funds, I would have bid up to around... I would have bid up to around 250 for this. Or, no, I would have bid up to around 210 and then another 50 bucks so 260 or so I would be willing to have paid for this if the grade on Harbinger 0 and 1 are at that level uh, and they looked not bad I, I wouldn't call them near mint like it doesn't the Harbinger number 1 does not look like a near mint it would have been very fine okay so it wasn't a bad deal it wasn't a bad deal Anyone seen the latest X-Men film? Used to love the characters, but fallen out of favor with the film series. Yeah, I think I wasn't fa I wasn't a fan of the last few uh, X-Men movies, and I hate I hated that they've told the Dark Phoenix Dark Phoenix story now three times. Move on. There's so many amazing X-Men stories to be told. Just. Dark Phoenix is Claire Claremont wrote it, but he wrote so many other amazing X Men stories. Make movies on those. Get go beyond the one trick pony, right? Because it's not gonna work. Fox X Men movie, movie uh, now are just not good. No, not including Deadpool. Deadpool is really good. Deadpool is really good. Yeah, Deadpool is really good supposedly they're coming up with new warriors ah that would be a psyched for so i think the first two x-men movies were very well done after that they kind of shit the bed yeah agreed oh my goodness if i had the money although the shipping here would probably be around yeah that that was a kicker for me man nikki that was a kicker for me if the shipping was like 15 dollars, i would have kicked up my bed right the, but the shipping was too much and then 
the higher the bid, the taxes would have been higher, right? I hate it that people are using eBay's global shipping program in the United States. It's preventing me from bidding on comic books, right? But just to get a lot of Harbinger 0 to 41 in one buy, and number one to six with the coupons and, and, the, and the zero pink cover, because those lots don't come up very often, the complete run. So it would have been worth doing. It would have been worth the buy. Uh, I love Deadpool 1 2. Deadpool 1 2, fantastic. Really good. I agree with you, uh, Mr. Hezekai. He's a, he's a uh, they, they were fantastic. They were super fun, especially Shatterstar when they did the X Force, when they jumped out of the plane. The only one that survived was Domino. The Shatter Star, I have the best at everything. Gets chopped up. The other guy goes to help him. So funny, so funny. What they did to Dark Phoenix Psycho was travesty. It was a travesty. Stop doing it, please, please. Do not make any more Dark Phoenix stories until you know how to make them. The first, the first one wasn't bad, right? I haven't seen the most recent one, but the previous one, I don't know what it was. It's just, it's just a mess, right? Since Disney bought Fox, an X-Men Avengers crossover would be possible. And most likely, at some point, we're going to see it. I think it's more than possible. I think it's going to happen. It's just a question of when, right? I think what we'll probably see in the next... Uh, Avengers types of movies, we're going to see uh, Easter eggs or cameo appearances with certain mutants uh, within the Avengers, right? That's what I think is going to happen. Came back, no uh, friends weren't uh, on task. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> Comic book stream is better. No, it's not. Depends what you're doing with your friends, right? Depends what you're doing with your friends. Doing it live stream, comic book live stream on a Sunday. Love it. I should be doing some of these on Wednesdays. Comic book live stream on Wednesdays. By the way, gang, uh, if you're sometimes I notice, sometimes I don't. If you're following, subbing, thank you very much for the follows. Thank you very much for the subs. Okay. Uh, just in case I haven't caught any. Um, but it's, a, it's an amazing time to be in. I brought some of the stuff that I've uh, still been reading. Right? I'm still just reading randoms. Random. I showed you some of these. I think uh, I showed you, I think I've shown you guys during a previous live stream, not a, a edited video or anything. During a previous live stream, uh, I think math live stream, I showed you guys these guys. And then I, or probably more. And then I've read this much more, at least. And then I have this much more random stuff that I wanted to read. What are your thoughts on what Marvel Studios are doing with Spider-Man? Uh, you know, it can be done way better. I haven't seen the most recent one, right? So I've heard good things about it. I saw some of the previous Are, are we talking about the comic books or the movies or the I'm assuming we're talking about the movies spider uh, because you said spider studio uh, Marvel Studios right uh, it hasn't grabbed me as as much as it should right um, so I still like them but they're not phenomenal uh, like for example for me phenomenal a phenomenal comic book related studio production is Legion. Legion is absolutely fantastic. If you haven't watched Legion the TV series, watch it. Start from the first season, it's into the third season, and this is the last season. Blows away. Doom Patrol is really good too, but blows away most of the other stuff out there. Happy was fantastic, but Legion is phenomenal. 
really dmt jackson how are you doing hey chicho how are you doing well doing well i am a massive fat man <laughs> i love the fat comics help me escape the memories that my dad kissed me too much maybe he loved you a lot in a good way right kiss you on the cheek right the animated version where they go inside the uh, crown crystal uh, was so much more interesting i don't get, get why they had to reinvent the wheel when they had a great story to work with but money so some people in the uh, producers working in the studios that know zero or have read zero of the comic books and don't understand that there's a vast library of stuff that they could be producing vast library of stuff that they could be producing crazy which series uh -huh. uh, this is x-men i believe macron i i don't know to tell you the truth the crystal but i remember something with the x-men doing that i'm sorry but i got to split for a while no worries nikki the stream and congrats on the buy man i think you got a good deal uh really i think you got a good deal uh the stream started as i put my kids to bed it was funny but me and my wife usually recap the day at this time over something nice i think this time it's empty awesome with honey i will return hopefully before the stream ends peace everyone peace nikki enjoy your time with your wife and your kids right the stream not important the family most important crow croaking oh two one of my favorite comic book related tv shows is american gods yeah american gods fantastic as well agreed agreed and again neil gaiman's writing and neil gaiman is uh, working as a producer and there's some amazing stuff produced stuff from neil gaiman one of them was uh uh a, oh my god the name was it was about a girl uh and goes into a black and white world and the boot dream i forget what it's called it was a fantastic mirror mask it was called mirror mask if you haven't seen a if you want to see a fantastic uh neil gaiman based story movie that is beautiful absolutely visually stunning the story is beautiful deep meaningful is mirror mask it didn't get a lot of um a lot of praise but i thought it was phenomenal i thought it was phenomenal american gods is fantastic well worth the watch ever watched death note i, I haven't watched uh, the i haven't read the death note animated uh, the manga but i've watched all of death note all five seasons fantastic really good really liked it morning chicho morning ratio hello barbarian how are you doing uh what was the series that uh you were just talking about that blows every stuff out of, out of there uh legion legion tv series okay uh it's hbo i believe or hulu or netflix i don't know which one it is right um and I won't give any spoilers until you guys say it's okay for me to give spoilers. Legion, L E G I O N, TV series, phenomenal. That is why the Deadpool movies were so good because Ryan Reynolds actually cares about the source material, one hundred percent. And by the way, Ryan Reynolds is from Vancouver, from my town, right? Uh, or Surrey, I think, my area anyone seen tarantino's new film no is that the one with harvey weinstein and woody allen <laughs> some people tarantino's new film uh people uh bombed the billboards in hollywood put harvey weinstein and not weinstein uh jeffrey epstein's face on it and woody allen and uh paul pollack and stuff like this regarding hollywood's uh disgusting behavior regarding children and stuff like this anyone's ever 
have a good day Nikki Salam Abdullah Abdullah Haddad 1986 Salam Chicho long time watcher first time chatter thank you for joining the chat Abdullah and I think you're on discord now just popped in sorry if you guys have already mentioned it top fiber which one no we haven't talked about uh, Tarantino's uh, new film at all I don't even know what it's about uh, Caroline was really good as well Caroline was good but uh, mirror mask is the one I was uh, talking about uh, thinking about oh right on I didn't even know Tarantino's had a new film yeah the only reason I knew about Tarantino's new film was because people bombed the billboards Brad Pitt, Margaret Robbie, uh, DiCaprio. Those are the people in the movie, really. Wow. I haven't seen a Top Fiver, but I'd like to. I saw it last night. It was fantastic. Really, what's it about Top Fiver? It was, it's about Hollywood, isn't it? And then they, the one, the billboard I saw, people changed the name. But I think it's about Hollywood. Would love to see a studio produce a show based on the preacher by Garth and preacher is out uh, croaking and it's a good series by the way preacher is already out it's in the second the second season's already done and that's a great series as well watch that series super fun series Germany how are you doing say just Germany the only Tarantino I didn't like was the hateful eight I like the hateful eight hateful eight was uh Hateful Eight was the cowboy one, wasn't it? Uh, I think so, where they go into this uh, stagecoach rest stop. I like that one too. Yeah, very slow movie. This new one is slow as well, but I enjoyed hanging out with the characters. Cool. Ducks Vic Tricks. Hey Chicho, hello Ducks Vic. Victrix Barbarian. I like the way Neil Gaiman Gaiman's approach to myth and gods and beliefs, yeah. But I didn't like approach of the series called Lucifer, which is inspired by Gaiman's story. Can we talk about the difference between these two? I you know what? I know Lucifer from the Sandman because Lucifer made his first appearance in Sandman number four, I'm pretty sure. Right? Uh, Barbarian. You can correct us if I'm wrong. But I I haven't read the uh, the Lucifer series, the comic book series. I've heard it's really good, but the Lucifer TV TV series, I watched like two episodes, and I couldn't watch anymore. Uh, if that's what we're talking about, then like approach of the series called Lucifer, which is part yeah, the TV series Lucifer is that's what you're talking about. I've only watched two episodes of it. And I didn't even think I finished two or three. And I didn't even think I finished either the second one or third one. I just had to stop. I was like, they're bastardizing <laughs> and Lucifer. I cannot watch this. It's horrendous. Right? It's like, what? Speak of Neil Gaiman. Anyone reading the Sandman series? Finally, Sandman. Fanta I haven't finished it yet. I haven't finished it yet. One day I will. If you haven't read Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman, it is also oh, I haven't read that one. Ocean at the End of the Lane. Cool. Have you seen Sherlock? I think it uh, was phenomenal in filming thought rather than filming in any an orderly way. No, I haven't. Is this most recent Sherlock? Is it Sherlock? I think it was phenomenal in filming thought rather than filming in an ordinary really no i've watched the first episode of chernobyl i found it to be very depressing so i haven't watched any more I, uh, I i plan on finishing it tarantino's new film was about charles manson i believe oh is it cool darn good uh saint just germany says yes cowboys and snow cowboys and snow Chup, Chup, 83. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. It's about an actor and his stunt doubles 
who is struggling to evolve the changing times of Hollywood. Margaret Robbie plays Sharon Tate and Charles Manson ties into the movie a bit. Cool. Good evening, all. Lord, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Thanks for the rundown, Top Fiver. I will be definitely checking out Tarantino's movie. I check out almost all of Tarantino's movies. I like them. Um, the first Tarantino movie I ever saw was Reservoir Dogs in a small independent theater when I was in university. That was phenomenal. And then after that, I just... Uh, Pulp Fiction and then uh, Jackie Brown was phenomenal too. You're right about the Lucifer and Sandman. I'm happy we share the same feelings about the TV series called Yeah, if yeah, Barbarian, if you're talking about TV series, and it's in its third or fourth season, I can't believe people are liking that. It was just trash. It really, it just felt like pure trash. I was offended. <laughs> I'm not a big TV series guy, but I highly recommend a series called taboo uh, to anyone who's a fan of Ridley Scott and or Tom Hardy it's a fantastic series and only has one season at the moment really I don't I don't know this taboo cool keep it in mind and top fiver if you remember anything you want to recommend for sure discourse if you could post links because that way we're sort of archiving um, and we can go there after the streams and click on what some people were referencing that that's what i do anyway if not the day of the next day or whenever i go on discord usually the day of my favorite series of all time lost i you know what i never watched lost i heard the ending was brutal the last season but uh the producer of lost made another tv series that i was watching that i really liked what was it uh reservoir dogs is your favorite movie of all time nice fantastic movie fantastic movie raw the dialogue the banter in the coffee shop and just the the way everything played out and the order of the movie being told you know and the soundtrack i think personally reservoir dogs is quentin tarantino's best best work okay in my opinion pulp fiction jackie brown close second but reservoir dogs i think is better than Pulp Fiction I agree with you Lord best Tarantino movie <laughs> and for you it's the, your favorite movie of all time cool what's your opinion about uh, uh, Duolingo that, that's the Tarantino's movie about the black gunslinger stuff I thought it was okay I got really addicted to it learning Spanish right now wait a second is, is uh, Saint Ger uh, just Germany are we talking about the TV uh, the movie um, that Tarantino put out about the cowboy, uh, the black guy who was a slave and, uh, during the in southern central USA and stuff. I watched it a while ago. Haha, <laughs> you're like my brother from this point to the end. <laughs> Lucifer is a trash TV series, which my wife liked to watch. Oh no, <laughs> has she ever read the, the comic book series? Have you seen Dark? Mm don't know dark Tarantino dark there's a few things I've watched with dark in them uh, over or read with dark in them I don't think just straight up dark though Tarantino says he's considering two options for his 10th and final movie one being a Star Trek movie I'd watch that that'd be cool believe it or not the second uh, option being no I hope it's not Kill Bill 3 I really hope it's not Kill Bill 3 I would not. I, I hope he does a Star Trek movie. Top fiver. The Jingle is a website about learning language. Oh, no, no, no. I thought you were talking about Django. No, I've never gone on there, uh, St. Just Germany. Why do I have to be Mr. Pink? Because <laughs> that was with the Baldwin, the younger Baldwin. That's why. That's why. <laughs> I mean. That's why Reservoir Dogs is my favorite movie of all time. Back then, they were not afraid to have offensive but very funny dialogue. Yeah, Lord, I agree with you. The dialogue, the banter in that movie is phenomenal. Phenomenal. 
I have watched Dark on Netflix because it's produced by in Germany. Really? No, I don't know Dark. I've never watched it. What's it about? The Django Unchained is the movie we're referring to, I believe. Yeah, yeah that's it, Top Fiver. That's it, The Django Unchained. My wife said uh, to say hello. Hello, Nikki's wife. Nikki wife. She, she had to run and feed another kid who was sleeping quite anxiously. Uh, I have a book on my shelf about Norse mythology written by Neil Gaiman. Really? Is this the same author you keep mentioning? It must be. Because he is really into mythology. Um, who's the one that's uh, uh, Mr. Uh, I gotta read the name. Hezekiah? Yeah. Mr. Hezekiah. Has Gaiman, Gaiman written a book on mythology? He, Norse myth, he must have because he he taps into North mythology, North, Norse mytholo mythology so much in his writings. For sure, it must be, uh, Nikki. Can you suggest me a good time travel movie series? Good time travel movie series. Um, if you're into okay old school uh, tr time travel series, which are funny and very well done and tell a story, extended story, uh, Quantum Leap that came out in the 1980s or 90s so quantum leap was fantastic okay um that was a tv series uh very well done um the tv series legion okay that i'm referring to in season three there's a huge time travel aspect to it and it's brilliantly done okay so that's two TV series that cover time travel. One of them from the 1980s, uh, I think Quantum Leap was 1980s, maybe early 1990s, and Legion. And there's a whole bunch in between uh, time travel. There's Sliders was okay. That's again from the 1980s, 1990s. Um, another full-blown there's another funny one i forget the name the first season was really funny i forget what the name was uh he's been he said he's been talking to umo about bringing the um bring the back back the bride kill bill is my favorite movies of all time so i agree kill bill 3 makes me makes me nervous yeah top fiver i'd be i'd be nervous i, w I don't want to see a kill bill 3 i don't will he do justice to it I don't trust him to do justice to Kill Bill 3. Uh, I think he's he spent too long in Hollywood. He's polluted. <laughs> Jumper with Hay Hayden uh, Christensen. That's another time travel movie, yeah? Jumper. Yes, my wife also read the graphic novels. That's what, uh, uh, what I don't understand. She and some other friends are like, yes, it's not perfect. We like the humor in it. I see no, I didn't see anything that I liked in that show. I see no humor, just try. That's pure, like, it, it made me cringe. Trash, anyways. Are you wait, waiting the upcoming TV series? I have my fingers crossed. Series The Witcher, like I do. Uh, oh no I, I heard about the Sandman gaming and talks for the Sandman I don't know about the Witcher had a chance uh, to play the Witcher game series no I don't know the bit I don't know about the Witcher Barbarian uh, I really don't know about the Witcher I don't know about the game either Looper okay cool thumbs up on Looper I guess have you ever watched Breaking Bad for sure Lord for me, that series is absolutely brilliant from beginning to end. 100% absolutely brilliant from beginning to end. Lord, watch Legion. Breaking Bad, 10 out of 10. Legion, 10 out of 10. American Gods, 9 to 9.5 out of 10. Uh, Doom Patrol, 8.5 out of 10. 8.5, 9 out of 10. 
No one thought Doom Patrol could be Grant Morrison's Doom Patrol could be made into a TV series. I never thought about it, right? Uh, nine and a half just for that. I adore Kill Bill one and two, but a th third Kill Bill, I can't see it being viable. I can't see it either. Do not, do, yeah. Tarantino, do not make Kill Bill three. Star Trek, please. We need better Star Trek movies. More better Star Trek movies. Have you read anything by? Mura Kami. Uh, I don't know. I would have to look him up to see. I'm really horrendous with names. So Murakami. 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 I'm just going to look him up really quick. What has he done? Murakami. A Wild Sheep Case. Norwegian Wood. The Wind Up Bird Chronicles. Kafka on the Shore. Kafka on the Shore I've heard about. Uh, you know what? I don't think I've read anything by him. Biography, novels, shorts, essays. Does he do comic books? Stop searching things. I'm gonna read. Dark is kind of a thriller series, but also a bit like Stranger Things, but way more uh, grown. Cool. That'd be cool. Isn't Jumper the one with Bruce Willis and his young, younger self? I am mistaken, or are we trolling here? I don't think that's the. That's the. That's the Jumper. I don't think so. Oh, sorry. Looper, with uh, Bruce Willis. Oh, okay. Inception. Hey, Chicho, currently watching the stream close to. Your country in Maine. <laughs> nice. Maine is beautiful, Intrepid. Maine is a beautiful region. I've driven through it. I really like Maine. I love Breaking Bad. I went on the Breaking Bad tour a few years back. Breaking Bad tour? I don't know about the Breaking Bad tour. Hopefully it doesn't involve uh, consuming blue crystal. I'm quite excited for Venom 2. Yeah, me too. Which will have Woody Harrelson's Carnage. I enjoyed the first Venom film. I didn't like the first Venom film very much. I didn't like... Uh, it could have been... I'm pretty sure there was a lot of great footage that was left on the cutting, uh, cutting room floor. I don't think it was a great movie, but it was extremely enjoyable. It was fun having Venom brought to life like that. That part I agree with. I think it could have been. Of course, anyone that loves Venom. It could have been done so much better, right? But it wasn't trash like everyone says, or many people say it was, like purest people, right? It was enjoyable. You watched the prequel series, Better Call Saul. Yeah, I've watched uh, one and a half seasons of it. I loved it, but I haven't continued it. At some point, I will. It really does justice to Breaking Bad. It's very good written, very dialogue heavy. Yeah, Lord... Uh, Better Call Saul, if you like Breaking Bad, I was hesitant at first. I was very nervous of watching it. But the first season was phenomenal. The second season, I think I might have finished the second season. Uh, phenomenal as well. Uh, but I just got distracted and started doing other things. At some point, I'll watch it again. I found it very heavy, depressing, right? Jumper is the one with the guy who played Anakin in Star Wars 1-3, to where he looks at pictures and can travel there oh okay cool i haven't seen that one i heard about it though i've seen the trailer oh for real hayden i know but never heard about that i'm gonna check it out awesome awesome the witcher is a game based on a best-selling novel written by andre uh sukowski he's the he's the token of eastern europe really i'm sure you would like it game and also the book cool Barbarian. I'll try to keep this in mind if it comes up again. Do you know Andre? No, I don't know Andre uh, Tarkovsky. Oh, hold on, this is a different Andre. Andre Tarkovsky. Who's Andre Tark? Just one book, or was it several? Love the Witcher book, books and games. The Breaking Back tour is a Winnebago 
just like in the show and it's in albuquerque uh it's run by a guy who played a small part in the show and he drives you around to all the places they film you go you go to the car wash and have lunch at los bobos or mantos <laughs> that's awesome man spider that's great what a fun thing to do Tur uh, turkowski is a monumental figure of cinema i adore the passion uh oh, i think i've seen this the passion of andre uh, lubrov and solaris that's right yeah 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 among many others oh that's uh, what's his name again torchowski okay cool yeah i've seen so but i'm calm just pulls you in right the character just the feel of the whole show Passion of Andre, I, I gotta check it out to remind myself if I've seen it or not. Thanks for the tip. Have you seen Nostalgia? Nostalgia. I do Russian and Soviet uh, studies, specialized in 60s, 70s. So this is my job. Cool. Yeah, I've seen some of his stuff. Then I've seen some of his stuff. I'm gonna look up uh, The Passion of Andre. I believe so. I think I've seen this one. says let me check this out have I seen this oh this is so familiar is it 1966 by a yeah I believe so a long time ago man uh, by local school drama film directed by George Cassie and co-written by Andrew the film was remade and re-edited uh, from from a nice film titled The Passion according to Oscar, which was uh, centered during the first day of I believe I have it was trippy from what I remember anyway there's so much stuff I gotta recheck Intrepid just want to stop in and say hey I got to, I got to get back to making a pine camp chair happy days camp chair cool enjoy the hand making what is it textile experience intrepid thanks for popping by hey any comics to keep an eye out for in these times any good deals on upcoming desirables bad segue, <laughs> bad segue. Uh, there's there's amazing comic book I wish I could buy it all right but I can't. I picked up the new X Men series. Um, it, I don't know if I'm going to start reading it. I got number one out. I picked up the one that's uh, uh, it's going to be a double cover with X Men one and X Men two. Um, so that series should be good. Uh, Grant Morrison's. Um, I read the first uh, issue. Someone sent me some money. Uh, enough to buy the first issue they said i'll buy you the first issue of uh grant morrison's um green lantern so i bought that and read it it was really good but it was typical grant morrison so much in it right so much in it and so it takes commitment to read and it's supposed to be pretty good um the new valiance valiance took a dive a little bit once they did the buyout the mc and uh, the main guy got kicked out and stuff like this uh, so the quality of the books came down a little bit but they're picking up again uh, from what I've heard, I'm, I'm really not c keeping up with any titles, right? Because I'm reading all these randoms and stuff. Um, there's a lot of independents putting out amazing books. Uh, so there's there's serious shift fluxes happening within the comic book industry. It really depends on what you're interested in. The horror genre in comic books is kicking up huge, huge from Immortal Hulk to all the Aftershock and Image Horror comics that have been, uh, been put up. It, you could walk into a comic book store and just do a little bit of research online, preferably because you're gonna get overwhelmed in a comic book store. Or talk to the comic book owners if you have access to a good comic shop. Uh, just sample some random things that people have said they're really good 
find the one you like, read that, and then either find out who the writer was, see what else they've done, if you really like the write, writer or the artist. It's just like finding amazing movies, right? Yeah, it was amazing. Just want to stop in and say, oh, that was intrepid. Seems like I have to, I have to go again. Okay, Lord, going out tonight with my other half. Nice, nice. Have a great stream, everyone. Thanks, Chicho, again for the content. My pleasure, Lord. Thank you for popping by, and I hope you have a fantastic evening with your partner. Right? Have a good one, Nikki says. I've been uh, looking for a copy of Amazing Spider 300 recently, being the first appearance of Venom, and I'm wondering what price ranges I should be paying for it. It depends, ratio. If it's a lower grade, if it's a lower grade, if you can get it for 50 to 100, you're getting a good deal in general. If it's a mid grade, 100 to 200, if it's that's a good deal in general. If it's a high grade, you're gonna start paying more and more for it, uh, right? Keeps getting harder to find for me. Yeah, and Spider, the the kicker with Amazing Spider-Man three hundred is, it there's a lot of it out there, but it's a sought after commodity. It's a sought after collectible, right? So, because it was a major key issue, so they printed a fair bit, right? So you could just bide your time and try to get a good deal, but as Spider says, slowly the price is going up, right? Like there's so many comics that I wish during these comic book hauls that we've done over the last five years, like really, we've done a fair bit of comic book hauls over the last five years, right? There's so many comic books that I either made an offer and the person didn't take it, or I decided to buy this one instead of this one, uh, or I just didn't have the funds to buy both and stuff like this, that now if I wanted to buy them, I would have to pay four times as much, right? So you you can't buy everything you really can't buy everything right or i can't buy everything i don't have the funds to buy everything right not even close so be selective if there's a key issue that you really want right and you don't really care about the grade then put it on your radar and start off at a lower grade right and buy your lower grade that way you know you have it you didn't pay too much for it if you can get an awesome deal. And then later on, if you want to upgrade, put a little money aside and upgrade. Maybe when the price, like, you know what I mean? Just don't, uh, but really the one thing you should appreciate is this. Unless there is a major correction in the comic book industry, in the comic book aftermarket, I guess we can call it, right? The collectible market, which there could be which really there could be. So that's one of the reasons you should always put money aside. You should have a certain amount of cash on one side. I'm just gonna move this box over, guys. So, this guy over. getting a little sun in it was a box of comics so I don't want the comic book box uh, short box to be sitting to be hit with Sun right so just move it away from the Sun it wasn't gonna do anything like it just a little bit of sunlight on it but I like to take care of the comic books right? <laughs> welcome to the neuro thing of collecting right um, but here's the thing with uh, expensive issues unless there's a major correction and all this jazz and always keep money on the side if there's a major correction in the industry the comic books you're looking for start buying them up right if you have the space right wait for it to bottom if you can buy them up and at some point they're going to go up again right like these things over the limit they're not the only the only way that 
these things will ever come down in price in the long run, in the limit, is if our com complete economic system mindset uh, is completely changed and the global economy collapses, right? And that's going to be short term and kick up again. So appreciate that price will go up slowly, maybe stabilize and stuff like this. So slowly try to pick up what you need or what you want. If you can't afford a high grade, at a lower grade. Okay. Did you read Animosity by Aftershock? Yeah. I read a few, the first few issues. I collected the first few issues. It looks super interesting. I also considered the new Valiance ANA. I heard good things about about it from you. Yeah, uh, Aftershock was, um, Animosity is good. It's basically Animosity, the story is, uh, I'm giving a spoilers away for the first issue, right? So you find this out right away. Animosity is when um, animals become sent, like they become aware and they can talk, right? So they take over the world and human beings are now second class species really, right? Because animals start killing, you know, pets start killing their owners and animals take over cities and stuff like this and whatnot. It was cool, it was fun. I read the first few issues and I liked it, I just didn't continue it. As for A plus A, Archer and Armstrong, the second continuing series that came out, it was okay, it wasn't phenomenal. The Archer and Armstrong you wanna read is the 2012 Archer and Armstrong series. Okay. Now, if you read the original Valiant, Archer and Armstrong from 1992, that's fantastic as well, right? That's your Archer and Armstrong number zero and then kicks into one and two, which will cross over with Unity and stuff. So the original Archer and Armstrong series from 1992 is really good, right? That's the introduction of Archer and Armstrong, fun read. But the 2012 Archer and Armstrong series is fantastic. 25 issues plus issue number zero. It is, as far as I'm concerned, the best humor action comic that I've read. Fantastic. Really good. Really, really good. I had a chance to pick up, uh, pick one up in like 2012, but I didn't uh, call, uh, cause a copy. It was like, it didn't, it didn't cost I didn't cause a copy was like two. Yeah, Amazing Spider-Man at two, you shouldn't be paying, like I wouldn't, I don't know what it's going for, I would have to check the prices. But Amazing Spider-Man, if it's a, a 300, if it's a two, it came out in 1998, 90, yeah, 1989, 88, 89. So a two is really low grade, it's because there's so many high grades, I don't think two value would be that much. But if you wanna pick it up, you pick it up, you have it. Someone says, you have Amazing Spider-Man 300? You go, yep. And if it's a two, you can easily frame it as well. If it looks okay on the cover, right? Hey, Chicho, how are you doing? Doing good. Iron MTS MS MKW. <laughs> iron. I'm going to call you Iron. I, can't, I don't even know what that would pronounce. Um, there's only one novel I wish to have. A novel with awesome art in it. It's Bernie Wrightson's Frankenstein. It's 100 US dollars. That's the only problem. Yeah. Bernie Wrightson, man. Bernie Wrightson's work until about three to four years ago, you could still pick up cheap. Bernie Wrightson's uh, Swamp Thing, Frankenstein, and all the other Bernie Wrightson stuff that he did, right? until five years ago, let's say, three, four years ago, you could have picked up Bernie Wrights and stuff on the cheap, right? Bernie Wrights and Swamp Thing and the other stuff that is now Frankenstein, that stuff is kicking up. That's what I've noticed in the last couple of years, two or three years. The prices on those things are kicking up huge, huge. Um, because what one thing I think that's happened, let me catch up on that chat and then we can talk about that regarding prices of comics and whatnot. Also, what do you think of uh, video games nowadays? Uh, you know what, Iron? I love video games. 
and I've seen some of the video games that some of my students and family and stuff and friends have, uh, have been playing, right? But I haven't been playing the games. So I can't really say uh, how some of those games are in terms of first person experience of playing them. But I think it's fantastic. I think the video game industry is phenomenal. And I think it has a long, long ways to go yet. Huge legs on the video game industry. I don't think people really in the mainstream really appreciate how the video game industry is changing the global economy. Okay. I'm also wondering about, uh, some do, some do for sure, but the general public not. Uh, I'm also wondering about how to store my n newly purchased comics. I've seen people have them in long boxes, but the kids would find them. <laughs> short boxes i would new comics i would keep in short boxes because they're heavier stock paper it's if you have a long box of new comics they're so heavy they're ridiculous older comics printed on newsprint long boxes oh they're heavy but they're easy to carry new comic books long boxes are horrendous right i wish they would go back to newsprint personally that's my personal opinion it would reduce the cost and it'd be easier to manage them right uh, move them and whatnot right as far as storing them away from the kids <laughs> i don't know <laughs> no. you gotta you gotta tell the kids this room is you can't go in okay you do not go into this room show them make them uh, nikki my thing would be show them right from the beginning respect other people's properties right and to treat comic books kindly right as well as buying them reading copies and say you can do whatever you want with this oh not not to derail discussion but chicho would you happen to have any recommendations for some true crime graphic uh, novels comics i adore my friend damar from hell and torso but I love more. You know what? One of the best crime comics that I started reading, um, and I read, uh, I didn't, again, like many things, I didn't keep up with it, but I really liked it, was, there's two of them, and it's from the same writer, okay? The most recent one is Moonshine, and I believe it's Aftershock. It came out with Aftershock comics. So Moonshine, and the writer is Brian Azzarello, right? And... Uh, Brian Azzaro better have done uh, <laughs> Brian, uh, Stray Bullets. Or was it Stray? No, not Stray Bullets. Uh, oh my God. Brian Azzaro. The name was in the tip of my tongue and then it went away. Uh, the series. Uh, da -da 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 100 Bullets, right? So I would highly recommend Moonshine, okay? It's easy to get into. There isn't too many issues, okay? So Moonshine is really good. Uh, it better be Moonshine, other publishers. How come it's not listed here? Let me make sure we're talking. I got the right writer. It, I know it's Brian Azzaro gotta be Brian as well what it's moonshine by Brian Azzarello and if you like it then try out uh, go with 100 bullets 100 bullets is phenomenal very very fantastic series really okay but start off with moonshine it's a uh, southern US and the artwork is beautiful and uh, I read again I've only read six issues of it I believe okay it's continuing series uh, it might have be coming to a close or whatnot but fantastic I was gonna start with AA from 1990s but thanks for the tip on 2012 yeah Nikki start off with the 2012 uh, Archer and Armstrong series I know that the, the, you know true valiant aficionados lovers will say hey wait a second Chicho, you should be telling them to start with the 1990s it's just just take a look at 
what perfection in humor comic series can be like and then you might have read in the 1990 series and read read some of it i didn't read all of it of course i pulled out when the buyouts happened and stuff but um and i took a little break from it and whatnot I, those still hold they're still really good okay from the 1990s as well but might as well start off with a phenomenal experience right and yeah i know the basic storyline animal city so no spoiler brother definitely gonna look for the first few issues in the future cool we were talking about the newsprint yesterday oh real, real, real yeah the newsprint man i like the newsprint uh, really and i like it that it doesn't glare under different light uh lighting like newsprint you can hold it any which way and you can still read it on every angle uh with the glare glossy paper the the lighting sometimes it's to get glares from them and they're definitely harder to do comic book readings on right oh chicho get a new camera looking good am i thanks might be the lighting <laughs> new backdrop envelope i'm on the same page regarding respect i do buy my older older girl comics that she can read so i can read mine next to her and have a nice activity awesome awesome and she is amazingly respectable of others items mainly because she has two younger twin sisters the problem is all my kids are all under two years so i can't realistically expect them to always respect these pieces of colored paper that's only for dad oh my no it won't work man even six seven eight years old once they get eight nine ten I think they more appreciate respect respecting property and stuff like this ah okay thanks i do trust your opinion so 2012 is it is nice 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 fantastic i really like that series at some point i'll read it again actually super fun series super fun series so good so good wow we've been at this almost two hours eh up time almost two hours crazy crazy comic book talk takes us so many places so many places super fun tomorrow we're doing a live stream on personal finance by the way if you guys are interested um, i believe so anyway i think we're doing it on personal finance investing in personal finance let me just check and it starts at 11 a.m let's make sure i got it right investing in personal finance at 11 a.m uh tomorrow morning okay so if you're interested in that um please feel free to drop by uh, i'm not sure where we're gonna go with it. it it really depends there's a lot going on uh we could discuss comic books investing in comic books which we did today uh to a certain degree right turns out listening to comic book talk and working on history is a good idea i'm blasting through nice nice noah comic books have a huge part to play in contemporary history for the last 80 years right they've used been used for propaganda in a huge way huge way they've been used to um by dissidents to share information They've been used by historians to tell history, by journalists to tell perspective of certain regions of the world, war-torn regions, maybe Joe Sok or others, right? I'm going to head off, but thanks for the stream, Chicho, and I'll keep you up to date with any comments I pick up. Awesome ratio, awesome, awesome. Have a great day. Hey, also, I was looking at some books trying to keep the stream going fantasy f uh, fantasy i love and sci-fi but it's gonna be good not just pew pew sword play and dragons um fantasy and sci-fi there's so much like right now um if if you like mythology uh fantasy it's a reading that we're going to do I would say slain the horned god uh, 
by Pat Mills and Simon Bisley. Pat Mills wrote it and Bisley did the artwork. Slain the Horn God is basically Celtic uh, mythology reinterpreted uh, I believe it's reinterpreted I don't know my mythology not all that well but uh, I, you know it's got some kind of base written some kind of base story that it builds builds on right phenomenal I think it's one of the most amazing uh, fantasy uh, series that I've ever read um, science fiction Reminder has done some amazing sci-fi stories. Tokyo Ghost is one of them. Lo is one of them. Uh, Jeff Lemire is doing some nice horror. Um, and uh, science fiction to a certain degree. Superheroes to a certain degree science fiction. But uh, Black, uh, Black Hammer uh, is fantastic. Right? Like, really. It, I, I, even have, I haven't even had time to read the stuff that I, I wanted to read. At some point, uh, I might take a sabbatical and just for three months just read comics every day and catch up and write reviews and do review videos on them or something. I'm going to keep an eye out. I actually was looking into Raymond, Raymond uh, Feist, yeah, recently. Let's see what he's written. Wow, he's written uh, Death Gate. Uh, that gate cycle for sure and that gate cycle was fantastic and there is a comic book series uh, based on it as well right uh, just so you know the Rift War saga there's a co uh, there's a comic book series that came out on the Rift War saga that I haven't picked up it was on my radar it's fairly common uh, but uh, I haven't picked it up yet I will at some point. I'd like to read it just to see how they did it with the, com uh, with the comic book stuff. Okay. So how about we call this a stream gang? Yeah. Nice comic book. I didn't even show you guys any comic books. <laughs> some stuff I'm planning on reading. These are, a lot of them are true believers. Just been reading Marvel stuff and uh, Valiant is putting out. Uh, this is really good too, by the way. Valiant, Valiant Comics. If you haven't read, what Rift War Comics? Yeah, there's Rift War Comics out there. I'm pretty sure, man. Rift War Comics. I'm pretty sure. I looked into this. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Rift War Comics. Unless I got my Rift War Com. Rift War, 1990. Yeah, I think Mar it says it looks like Marvel put them out. Oh, I don't want to go to Marvel website. Marvel website is horrendous. It takes so long to load. Yeah, Rift War Comics. Came out with, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I don't think Feist wrote the comics. Uh, it looks like there's five issues. Here's a link for it. the Rift War stuff. If you like a great sci-fi, I'll drop, drop this as well. Uh, Armor Hunters. It was an 18-issue crossover from um, from Valiant Comics. And it's, it's a fantastic crossover, really. I really like this crossover. Fantastic storytelling. Okay. Armor Hunters. This is issue number one. I'm going to reread it. I just bought it from a dollar bin because my other stuff is buried. I just wanted to read the first issue again. Okay. The glare, the glare. The glare, the glare. There's a lot more I got here. Sup. I just got the Sandman by Neil Gaiman on the most. Nice. Blunden, you're in for an amazing, amazing read. Amazing read. All 75 issues in one. Thick. Thick. Hello, Chicho. Do you think of society's modern take on science fiction movies? What do you think of the... Personally, I think they should be made to motivate younger audiences. Uh, I think they are made uh, 
in a big way to motivate uh, future generations. Like science fiction, one of the ones is uh, Black Mirror is a science fiction series. Phenomenal, one of the greatest science fiction series ever created on the same level as the original Twilight Zone series, right? Uh, fantastic, and it's giving a lot of warnings into how our societies might be. Uh, I think uh, there's some amazing science fiction being put out across the board. In, I haven't read too many sci-fi books recently, uh, but more recent books anyway, but in the comic book world, in the movie world, in TV, TV world, there's some amazing science fiction being put out. Yeah, that's for sure. I did want to see some comics, but I'll wait. Okay, yeah, we're gonna show, we're gonna do a lot more comics in the future, so uh, they'll be around. Damn, I have to get Ref for comics. Thanks, buddy, for all this. My pleasure, thank you. <laughs> that was exactly the same thing I said when I found out that there was comics on it. Damn, I need to get my hands on that thing. <laughs> it's huge. Nice. Yeah, it must be huge. 75 issues of Neil Gaiman, Sandman, in one volume. But phenomenal. I like to get it all in one volume as well, actually. And just sit down and do a marathon read on it. Or buy a whole collection on eBay. And I should be doing that. By the way, if you want to get your hands on a whole collection of Sandman, single issues, do it sooner rather than later, uh, is my guess. And I'm going to try to do it, but I don't have the funds right now to get it done okay okay gang aside from that thanks for being here for the stream i appreciate it great conversation uh it gets me all excited and gets rid of all the worries of the world that we know that are taking place right now right uh so it's fun to talk about these things and if you can make it we're going to do a stream tomorrow at 11 a.m on investing in personal finance take care as well brother take care as well okay and uh, aside from that I'll load on these live streams on BitChute and YouTube once we finish uh, doing them all. And in the background this week, I'm going to try to shoot at least one video and edit it and have that up as well. We'll see where we go with that. Okay. Hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic Sunday. Goodbye. I'll try and make it tomorrow. Awesome. Peace out, man. Peace out. Bye, everyone.